much, Dr. Khanna. I'm absolutely thrilled to be a part of this phenomenal collaboration. Um, this is certainly something positive that's happening during this really challenging time. So um, we're going to talk about uh, what uh, physiotherapists and other paramedical staff can do for patients that are intubated in the ICU, uh, how we can use proning, either uh, proning on intubated patients or proning on awake patients, as well as positioning to help our patients with COVID-19. Okay, quickly translate that. Dr. Thawar, who will tell us about the way of physiotherapy in the ICU patients and in which we are following proning, positioning, COVID patients in the ICU patients. Thanks, Ruxana. So uh, we know that with COVID-19, our patient develops a viral pneumonia, which doesn't normally respond to physiotherapy techniques like uh, percussion. Um, so uh, if you have a COVID-19 patient who only has COVID-19, no other comorbid conditions, and they have pure viral pneumonia, um, the best thing you can do for them is some very gentle limb physio and um, prone position. But there are scenarios, and we'll go through each one, there are several scenarios where uh, your expertise as paramedical staff will be needed specifically for physiotherapy techniques. Now, for some reason, ventilated patients may develop secretions. In that case, you can use inline suctioning as a way of clearing those secretions. Uh, when patients are ventilators, they know that they develop the secretions. So, for such patients, it is necessary to do suctioning for such patients. After a patient is extubated, again, just from the uh, process of extubation um, uh, and uh, them regaining consciousness, they may develop secretions. So, this would be another opportunity where you might be able to employ uh, positioning, postural drainage, manual percussion, and then huffing or coughing techniques to help with reading the body of those secretions. When extubation is done, the secretions are developed on the patient. We also do the secretions to remove the suctioning. We have to give the first manual percussions, we have to do the thoracic compressions, we have to do the positioning of the patient so that we can easily do the secretions easily. एक्सट्रैक्टरेट कर सके, राइट? तो इसको निकालने के लिए सक्षणिंग का जो मेथड है, वो भी हमें बताया जाएगा। So with the pure viral pneumonia, there's some speculation that it may, as as a patient becomes better with proning, with medication, they may develop secretions, even though it's a pure viral pneumonia and a pure viral consolidation, they may start developing mucus hypersecretion. Uh, in that case, if they're still intubated, which they likely will be, then you can use inline suctioning to clear those secretions. One of the most important scenarios is you have a patient with COVID-19 and they have a comorbid condition like cystic fibrosis or chronic bronchitis, COPD. They have a condition that normally produces a lot of secretions. ऐसे केसेस जिसमें सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस है या ब्रोंकाइटिसिस का पेशेंट है या सीओपीडी के साथ है तो ऐसे पेशेंट्स में सक्षणिंग को करना बहुत जरूरी हो जाता है लेकिन हम कर नहीं पाते हैं ठीक है लेकिन जहां पर सिर्फ और सिर्फ कोविड 19 के पेशेंट्स आते हैं वहां पर हम सक्षणिंग को जो है वो थ्रू डिफरेंट पोजीशनिंग थ्रू डिफरेंट प्रोनिंग पोजीशनिंग हम इसको करवा सकते हैं so that the patient's comorbidity is less and less. And after the patient is prone, we can mobilize the thoracic compressions properly. The other role for physiotherapy is in preventing the complications that arise from prolonged immobility in the ICU, such as prevention of DVT by doing gentle limb physiotherapy, prevention of developing pressure sores, by helping the nursing staff working as a team to do position changes and minimizing the effects of um, uh, myopathy and neuropathy uh, from being immobilized for prolonged periods of time. So I just want to reiterate that one of the most important scenarios where paramedical staff will be needed is in a COVID-19 patient who has a comorbid condition that produces a lot of secretions. Translate that uh, as I've said it specifically. Okay. 
कोविड नाइन्टीन पेशेंट्स के अंदर जो है जो जो पेशेंट को मोबिट के साथ होते हैं ठीक है जैसे सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस वगैरह है तो ऐसे केसेस में सक्शनिंग की ज़्यादा नीड होती है सिक्रीशन ज़्यादा डेवलप हो जाती है तो उसमें जो है हम प्रोनिंग के थ्रू हम इन चीज़ों को इन्हांस करवाते हैं ताकि हम उनकी प्रिवेंशन को कॉम्प्लिकेशन्स को प्रिवेंट कर सकें जैसे कि हमारे पास डीबीटी अगर हो जाता है या फिर बेड सोर्स की कंप्लेन आ जाती है तो हम थ्रू दीज पोजीशनिंग एंड थ्रू दीज प्रोनिंग पोजीशनिंग हम इनको अवॉइड करवा सकते हैं ओके सो सम ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट यू माइट बी आस्ट टू डू इज फॉर एग्जांपल ऑब्टेन अ स्पीडम सैंपल इन अ कोविड-19 वेंटिलेटेड पेशेंट द सेफेस्ट वे टू डू दिस इज वाया अ ट्रैकियल एस्पिरेट सैंपल फिजियोथेरेपिस्ट्स आर रूटीनली आस्क टू डू दिस सो एट एकेयूएच दिस इज द प्रोसेस फॉर यूजिंग um you might be asked to assist the uh, medical team in prone positioning the patient um so this can be done uh in intubated patients we will i will show you a video later um it can also be done with a patient who has been extubated um and who begins to deteriorate prior to intubating them again we can try proning this is called conscious or awake proning so you may be asked to assist the team in proning the patient you may be asked to do passive range of motion otherwise known as limb physiotherapy again to maintain joint mobility to prevent joint stiffness sputum sampling ke liye jab physiotherapist ko kaha jata hai agar wo ventilated patient hai to hum uska tracheal aspiration bhijwate hain theek hai aur iske sath sath hum patient ki positioning ka bhi khayal rakhte hain taki wo agar wo prone position mein hai aur agar wo conscious hai theek hai तो फिर हम जो है वो आ, उसके अंदर जो है वो हम एस्परेट हम कोविड 19 के पेशेंट को हम इजीली ट्रैकियल एस्परेट के थ्रू स्प्यूटम सैंपल्स को भिजवा सकते हैं इसके साथ साथ हम ऐसे पेशेंट्स की पैसिव मोबिलाइजेशन भी करते हैं ताकि इनकी जो इमोबिलिटी है उसको हम प्रिवेंट कर सकें और ताकि इनके जो बेड सोर्स वगैरह है उसको भी हम प्रिवेंट कर सकें all suctioning should be done with inline suctioning because we want to minimize aerosolization as much as possible even with full ppe and negative pressure rooms which might not be available at every single facility because of that reason um the recommendation from international bodies is to only do inline suctioning closed inline suctioning now we can also do active mobilization what does that mean it means um doing active range of motion on a patient it means helping them sit up in bed it means helping them walk from the bed to the chair this will only happen when a patient has been extubated but is still in the icu uh for them to recover a little bit of strength before they go to the step down ward but you have to be very cautious okay these patients will be extremely fatigued uh they will have significant muscle loss they will have significant deconditioning so any kind of active therapy like deep breathing coughing any active mobilization must be done very cautiously and very gradually एक्टिव मोबिलाइजेशन जब हम करवाते हैं तो उसके लिए हमें जो है वो बहुत ही कॉशियसली ऐसे पेशेंट्स को देखना है क्योंकि कोविड 19 के जो पेशेंट्स होते हैं वो बहुत जल्दी जो है वो अपने आप को फटीक फील करते हैं क्योंकि उनकी मस्कुलर स्ट्रेंथ जो होती है वो बहुत वीक होती है और मस्कुलर लॉस की वजह से वो पेशेंट जो है वो इतना एक्टिवली मोबिलाइज नहीं कर पाते हैं तो हमें बहुत ही जेंटली ऐसे पेशेंट्स को जो है वो सेटअप्स करवाने हैं और उसके बाद हम अपनी एक्टिविटी को डे टू डे इन्हांस करते हैं ओके सो दीज आर सम रियली इफेक्टिव ब्रीदिंग टेक्निक्स दैट यू कैन टीच द पेशेंट वंस दे हैव बीन एक्सटिवेटेड एंड दे आर स्टेबल ओके द फर्स्ट वन इज डायफ्रेगमेटिक ब्रीदिंग ओके this one here and you can do this with the patient lying down in supine even better to do it with the patient sitting up okay so basically uh, the goal here is when the patient takes a breath in through the nose you want them to use the diaphragm to inhale the air into the lungs so their belly should actually rise up you don't want any of the muscles around the neck or the upper chest to be activated okay so you tell the patient to take a breath in through your nose don't move the muscles around your neck or upper chest only let your tummy expand out and then exhale slowly 
पोस्ट uh, एक्सटिब्यूशन के बाद जो हम ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज करवाते हैं उसमें सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट जो बात है वो ये है कि ये एक्सरसाइज हम लाइंग पोजीशन में भी करवा सकते हैं और हम सिटिंग में भी करा सकते हैं लेकिन सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट बात ये है कि इसमें जो है हमें ब्रीथ लेने के बाद एबडोमिन को देखना होता है फोकस हमारा जो होता है वो बैली पे होता है कि एयर जो हम ले रहे हैं थ्रू नोज वो हमारी बैली तक जा रही है नहीं तो हमें एक हाथ जो है वो अपना बैली पे रखना है और एक हाथ जो है अपना थोरेसिक थोरेसिक कंपार्टमेंट पे रखना है चेस्ट पे रखना है ताकि जब हम डीप ब्रेथ ले रहे हैं तो फिर हमारी जो बैली है वो एबडामिन जो है वो हमारा आउट आउटवर्ड होगा राइट right? तो अगर हम ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज करवाएंगे तो हम ये भी बहुत स्लोली करवाएंगे ताकि पेशेंट जो है इसमें एग्जॉस्ट एग्जॉस्ट ना हो जाए ओके Yes, Roxana made a very good point to do these very gradually. The second exercise is purse slip breathing. This is extremely effective for uh, maximally exhaling the um, carbon dioxide that's in the lungs. So you ask the patient to breathe in through the nose, then you ask the patient to purse their lips. So it's as if you want to make a whistle. You you make you put your lips in the shape like you're going to make a whistle, and then you ask the patient to breathe out slowly. This is not a forced expiration. They must breathe out slowly, okay? Uh, and um, it should take a little bit longer to breathe out than to breathe in to ensure that they are evacuating as much air out of the lungs as possible. दूसरी एक्सरसाइज है पॉल्स क्लिप एक्सरसाइजेस. इसमें हम ये करते हैं कि पहले ब्रीथ इन करते हैं for about two seconds, ठीक है? And then फिर हम अपने लिप्स को जैसे हम विसल्स विसल करते हैं सीटी बजाते हैं उस तरह हम अपनी एयर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड को बाहर निकालते हैं और जब हम बाहर निकाल रहे होते हैं हवा को तो वो कम से कम चार सेकंड का प्रोसीजर होना चाहिए ताकि जितनी एयर हमने अंदर ली है उससे डबल अमाउंट की एयर जो है वो बाहर आए ओके राइट दी नेक्स्ट टेक्निक इज ऑल्टरनेट नॉस्ट्रो ब्रीदिंग टेक्निक दिस इज अ ग्रेट टेक्निक फॉर forcing the patient to slow down their respiration rate all of these techniques will help them bring their breathing under control but this one in particular will really force the patient to breathe uh, at a lower respiratory rate which is what we want we want to decrease their work of breathing not increase it the other thing this will do is it will help strengthen their respiratory muscles in preparation for them going to the step down ward so this technique um basically what you're going to do is you take uh the patient's thumb and they block or index finger they block the right nostril they take a breath in through the left nostril for 4 seconds then they close both nostrils okay release the right nostril exhale out for 6 seconds okay breathe in through the right nostril for 4 seconds close both open the left exhale out for 6 and we repeat that ओके पॉइस स्लिप ब्रीदिंग का जो दूसरा है वो है ऑल्टरनेट नॉस्ट्रल ब्रीदिंग टेक्निक इसमें जो है हम ये करवाते हैं कि पेशेंट के एक नॉस्ट्रल को राइट right साइड के नॉस्ट्रल को हम अपने थम से पिंच uh, करते हैं ताकि वो क्लोज हो जाए उसके बाद हम ब्रीथ करवाते हैं फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट नॉस्ट्रल कि आप फोर सेकेंड के लिए ब्रीथ इन करें एंड देन फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट फ्रॉम दी राइट नॉस्ट्रल उसको उस uh, उसको बंद करने के बाद लेफ्ट नॉस्ट्रल को बंद करवाते हैं और राइट right नॉस्ट्रल से एक्सेल करवाते हैं राइट right? यानी हम पहले जो है वो राइट right नॉस्ट्रल को बंद करवाएंगे और इनहेल करवाएंगे फ्रॉम दी लेफ्ट नॉस्ट्रल फोर सेकेंड के लिए उसके बाद हम राइट right नॉस्ट्रल से एक्जेल करवाएंगे फॉर सिक्स सेकेंड ताकि वो पूरी अपनी एयर जो है वो एक्सेल करे फॉर द लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम राइट ओके नाउ फॉर पेशेंट्स दैट आर नॉट इंटिबेटेड बट दैट आर स्टिल हैविंग अ लॉट ऑफ डिफिकल्टी ब्रीथिंग इफ दे आर अवेक देन वी कैन एक्चुअली पुट दम इन टू साइड लाइंग स्पेशली इफ दे आर अन एबल टू टॉलरेट फुल प्रोन लाइंग a uh, full prone lying for a conscious patient could be quite scary it could be really intimidating um and it seems illogical to the patient the patient will tell you how can i breathe if i'm lying down on my tummy on a, and on my face right so they might not feel comfortable with prone lying so what you can do instead is start with side lying okay now this patient even though he or she won't be intubated they will probably have 
um, an IV line, they might have an arterial line, they might have a Foley. So you have to be careful when you take the patient from supine to sideline, okay? The technique I recommend is the arm that has the line, arterial line or IV line, should always remain on top of the body. So for example, if those lines are in the right arm, then we want to turn the patient to lay on their left side. That way, the right arm with all the lines will always remain on top of the body and safe. The lines will not become tangled or dislodged, okay? So um, basically, you ask the patient to place their left arm behind their head, okay? And then you assist the patient by pulling their right arm across their body. They cross their legs together, and then you gradually roll them into side lying. And to make them comfortable, because you want them to stay in side lying as long as possible. To make them comfortable, you can increase their comfort by using pillows. You can put a pillow between the knee or a blanket, a pillow, a wedge, or a blanket between the knees, under the head. Um, this down here is the position that I have found personally patients feel most comfortable with. They can stay in this position for four to six hours. And then in this position, you can actually do some uh, manual percussion, which I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, the uh, non-intubated uh, patients are in the side line, but we have to think about this before, we have to keep in mind that the lining is on the side of the side, the lining is on the arterial line, the AV line, we have to keep in mind that it is on the upper side, right? So the lower side, the unsound limb, where there is no lining, if it will stay down, then there will not be any hindrances. तो साइड लाइन कराते हुए बस इस चीज का ख्याल करना है हमें कि कोई आईवी लाइन या आर्टरियल लाइन जो है वो इनकी बीच में रैप अप ना हो। ओके। सो यू नो अबाउट पोजीशनिंग। नाउ इन दिस पोजीशन इन इन साइड लाइन वो इन प्रोन। इफ द पेशेंट कैन गो प्रोन, देन यू कैन एक्चुअली अप्लाई मैन्युअल परकशन टू हेल्प � with um, ARDS and particularly with COVID-19, we're seeing a lot of consolidation in the lower lobes. So we really want to target the lower lobes and sideline and prone positions help us do that. I'm going to show you a short video uh, on the proper technique for percussion. So this is the position of the hand. The hand should be cupped. So there's a pocket of air between the hand and the patient's body. And if you're doing it correctly, you should hear a popping sound. Just like that, a popping sound. That's how you know that your technique is correct, okay? Okay, this is uh, how you can target the lower lobes, the different segments of the lower lobes when the patient is in side lying. Now, another task that um, paramedical staff might be asked to do for these patients while they're intubated is limb physiotherapy. Again, we do limb physiotherapy, which is essentially passive range of motion to minimize joint stiffness, uh, joint contractures, uh, muscle shortening. Um, limb physiotherapy ke liye aksar log puchte hain ki hum kis tarah karwaye to isme jo hai hum passive limb mobilization karwate hain theek hai jiske andar jo hai hum uh, inclined positioning karwa sakte hain passive activity karwa sakte hain ye sab cheeze hoti hain isme okay the key thing here is your patient will have multiple lines attached to them so you have to do limb physiotherapy very carefully also these patients are extremely fragile. If you move the arm or the leg suddenly, they may actually desaturate. So the take home message here is be cautious and do the movements very gradually. जब भी हम लिम्फ फिजियोथेरेपी करवाएंगे कोविड 19 के पेशेंट्स को तो हमें बहुत ही कॉशियसली करवानी है और बहुत विग्रेस एक्सरसाइजेस नहीं करानी है, जेंटली करानी है और ग्रेजुअल एक्सरसाइजेस करानी है। now, one of the most effective strategies that we, uh, as a um, uh, as as frontline frontline workers, have to help our patients recover is proning of intubated patients. 
This is a technique that I um, am trying to promote uh, because it's a very effective technique. It uh, keeps the patient very safe. It helps maintain all of the lines uh, without getting tangled or damaged. I'm going to show you a video. Now, um, this is a 20 minute process. There, it would be very difficult to show you all the individual steps. I just want to show you, give you a flavor of how this technique is done and how uh, effective it can be. And then if you require more training, we can try to arrange that. So this is a prone, pa this is an intubated patient. Good. Wrong video. Okay. That was the incorrect video, I apologize. Um, I will make the correct video available to you after the course. Okay. So uh, I just want to, before I wrap up, I just want to reiterate that these patients are extremely, extremely fragile, especially if they're still intubated in the ICU. Um, and the reasons why they are um, uh, extremely fragile is just the effect of COVID-19 on the whole body. COVID-19 doesn't just affect the lungs, it actually affects multiple organs. So any rapid or sudden movement that is done to the patient's limbs, for example, will cause a reduction in PEEP, and that will in, in turn uh, result in the recruitment of lung tissue uh, and atelectasis. And um, that means that we're actually taking a huge step back. So I continue to reiterate that anything you do should be done gently and gradually. Also, um, once these patients are extubated, and you start to begin a little bit of rehab with them before they go to the step down unit, um, you must keep in mind that because of the inflammatory response from COVID-19, there's going to be a lot of pulmonary scarring in the lung tissue. And as a result, these patients will fatigue very, very easily. So any type of activity you give them must be done very gradually. Uh बहुत cautiously इस चीज का ख्याल रखना है कि ऐसे जो patients होते हैं COVID-19 के वो सिर्फ lung को compromise नहीं करते हैं बल्कि पूरी body के organs को compromise करते हैं जिसकी वजह से जो है वो deconditioning हो जाती है muscles जो है वो easily fatigue हो जाते हैं बहुत ही patient जो है वो अपनी immunity को low feel करता है तो ऐसे patients को हमें slowly or gradually apni exercises karwani hai na ke hum vigorous exercise karwai gently exercises ko karwana hai also you know we know that covid-19 patients spend a lot longer on a ventilator and as a result a lot longer in the icu and because of that they tend to suffer from post intensive care syndrome which is a collection of symptoms that patients who spend a long time in the icu have along with delirium so as paramedical staff who have to work closely with these patients before they go to the step down unit, you want to remember that how you communicate with them, how you interact with them is really important. They will not be able to retain a lot of information. They might have some cognitive deficits that will take time to bounce back. So you might only be able to show them one or two exercises. You might only have their attention span for a few minutes. So please keep that in mind as you are um, working with them. इसके अलावा मैं साथ साथ इस बात का भी ख्याल रखता हूँ कि ऐसे पेशेंट्स जो होते हैं उसमें डेलिरियम बहुत हो जाता है तो हमें ज़्यादा एक्सरसाइज़ नहीं करवानी है लिमिटेड एक्सरसाइज़ करवानी है और कम एक्सरसाइज़ करवानी है ताकि वो याद रख सके ओके दीज आर सम ऑफ़ द टेक्निक्स दैट इंटरनेशनल um, and as a physiotherapist, um, typically I use these techniques, but I would not on a COVID-19 patient. Okay, now these are also techniques that we, uh, doing chest physio, use a lot. However, with a patient with COVID-19 who has just been extubated, I am strongly recommending that you don't use any of these techniques. They simply will not have the energy to do deep breathing. They will not have the energy to tolerate manual mobilization of the rib cage or very intense respiratory muscle training. Stick to the three techniques that I, that I showed you earlier. 
Uh, once they're in the step down unit and their fatigue begins to resolve, then you can add a few more of these techniques. Diaphrag diaphragmatic breathing can be done, but use your clinical judgment. Uh, very important thing is that the uh, acute or unstable patients that we have in the majority of the majority of physiotherapists do these exercises. In these patients, in COVID-19 patients, we have not done these exercises because these patients are very fragile. And we have not done any results. So, the three exercises we have told you before, we have to follow them in the beginning. And you have to decide your clinical management करना होगा कि पेशेंट इसको कर सकता है या नहीं। These can be added once they're in the rehab phase, yeah. once they're in the step down unit or at home. हाँ, जब पेशेंट जो है वो step down unit में shift हो जाएगा after like ICU, तब हम ये exercise करवा सकते हैं, लेकिन during exercise during ICU हमें ये exercise नहीं करवानी है। All done. Thank you so much, Habiba. Thank you very much. So are we going to, we have some questions. Sure. Thank you. Uh, please, okay. five few more minutes. First question is um, the one that I was asking you earlier. What is the physiology behind the prone position in intubated patient? So um, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but basically when we are in supine and the viral pneumonia is in the uh, lower lobes, we have gravity as well as our body weight. Either further compressing the little alveoli that go from round to flat. Now, if we flip the patient over, what we're doing is we're actually allowing those alveoli to open up. So we're actually improving ventilation perfusion ratio. That is how we're helping to get more oxygen into the blood of this patient. So that's one of the main reasons why prone uh, positioning really works in both conscious and intubated uh, COVID-19 patients. And there's actually a lot of results from international studies that are coming in every day, anecdotal reports, case histories. Um, and, we, and there's a long standing body of literature that prone positioning uh, based on its various physiological results um, does wonders for people with ARDS. Thank you. Uh, do you want to say something? Uh, no, okay. okay, thank you so much. The next question is, do we prone all the intubated patients or we only uh, prone those patients who are having respiratory difficulties in COVID-19? So there are very strict criteria. Um, uh, and uh, basically, um, if they meet those criteria, te technically, you want to prone a patient who is uh, not uh, doing well, even though the ventilator is at the maximum possible settings for their oxygen saturation, okay? An FiO2 of 150 or less, then if they're still not responding and there's nothing else you can do to optimize ventilation, ventilation settings, then they might be a prone candidate. But there's a whole list of contraindications. Um, uh, if they're hemodynamically unstable, um, if they have burns, depending on if they have a spinal cord injury or fracture. So there's an exhaustive list of contraindications that you have to run through before you can even consider if a patient can be prone. Thank you very much. And the other next question is that if we do decide that one, some, uh, that particular patient needs proning and the, we have, there's no contraindication. So then um, how many times uh, during the day we should do the proning and for how long? So this is a really great question. So Typically, um, uh, the literature, there's a bit of variety in the literature, but um, at AKUH, we're kind of going with, you keep them in prone for 16 hours, okay? 16 hours straight, but every two to four hours, you change their head position. So when you first put a patient in prone, they might be, their head will be rotated to the left, okay? This arm will be up, this arm will be down. After two to four hours, you actually have to rotate their head to the right and flip the arm position. This is called swimmer's position. So they can be in prone for up to 16 hours, but every two to four hours, we need to switch their head position. Uh, again, to mitigate any kind of um, uh, sequelae from being in one prolonged position. Thank you. Um, um, you have answered the next question mostly, but I'm okay. going to ask again, just to reiterate the point, what major precautions we need to take for the prone position of intubated patients? So um, once, uh, assuming that uh, the patient doesn't have any contraindications and the medical team has decided that we're going to prone them and the proning is done, while they're in proning, 
It doesn't mean our work is done. We have to monitor them. So like I said, every two to four hours, we have to change position of the, of the head and the neck and the arms, but we also have to take other precautions. Uh, it's very common for the patient to be at risk for brachial plexus injury in prone positioning. So that's why we put them in a very specific position called the swimmer's position, where the shoulder is at 80 degrees of abduction and the elbow is at 90 degrees of flexion, okay? And we also put blankets or pillows under the chest to help uh, place the body in a bit of a concave position, which protects the brachial plexus. Um, we can also get skin breakdown, right? Because there's a lot of bony prominences that come into contact with the bed if a patient isn't prone for 16 hours. So we usually have a pillow across the pelvis and a pillow across the knees. And you wanna make sure that you maybe have a pillow or a blanket uh, along the lower legs to ensure that the feet, the dorsum of the feet and the tips of the toes aren't touching the bed. You also wanna ensure that the pillows are positioned such that um, the abdomen is not um, in contact with the bed because you don't want to you don't want to limit diaphragmatic excursion. We want to aim for a max tidal volume, so you don't want anything blocking the um, uh, the abdomen and the diaphragm from expanding. So those are a few of the precautions you need to take when the patient is in prone. Okay. Is it a lot? Yeah, no. Okay. The um, happy with the next question is: Can we employ this technique for pediatric patients who are intubated? So you possibly could. Um, I uh, have not done any research on that, but I can and I can get back to you on that. That is not my area of specialty, but I can investigate that and let you know. Okay, so then the next uh, two questions are related to the physiotherapy. Why lymph, why lymph physiotherapy is important for COVID-19 patients? Okay, so um, the reason it's indirectly important. We do lymph physiotherapy uh, for anybody who's in ICU for a prolonged period of time, anybody who is um, uh, going to be immobile, because we don't want to, uh, we don't want those patients to um, experience joint contractures, joint stiffness, muscle shortening. And also, if we can maintain their joint mobility, then when they are extubated, they have a better chance of succeeding at rehab. This is even more important for COVID-19 patients because they have so much going against them. So any kind of advantage that we can give them early on, we should try to give them. Limb physiotherapy will protect their joints from stiffness, from contracture development, and hopefully this will make their rehab a little bit easier down the road. Uh, the next question is related to what you emphasized at the end of your presentation. As, um, uh, it's, as it is asked that why don't, why should we not do uh, aggressive respiratory training in the patients who are actually now doing better. You emphasize that they can get tired and all that. Yes. The, the, the question is that as a knee, as a knee training to gain muscle strength, mm -hmm. so why should we not doing it okay. at that point? So there's a fine line between when a patient goes from severe ARDS to moderate ARDS. What we want to do is when we extubate a patient, um, we want them to move into moderate ARDS and we want them to move into mild ARDS. So the initial 24 to 48 hours, based on my experience, following extubation is critical. If we overwhelm them, if we overwhelm the cardiopulmonary system, they will deteriorate in function, okay? So you can do exercises, but you must do them very cautiously and not aggressively. Um, like I said, I would recommend diaphragmatic breathing. I would recommend purse lip breathing alternate nostril breathing, those are strengthening respiratory muscles, but in a very conservative manner. Once they pass the 48 hour test and they go to the step down unit, then you can ramp up your rehab. But again, gradually, because they will desaturate, they are extremely fragile and they will fatigue easily. Uh, Habiba, you have generated a lot, lot of interest. Now there are so many more questions. Awesome. So if some patient is on non-invasive mechanical ventilation, what is the role of physiotherapy in that particular patient? Okay, so if the patient is a non-invasive, then they're likely awake, okay? Maybe they're awake. So the first thing you wanna do is, remember with COVID-19, you wanna minimize contact with the patient because you're at risk as a frontline worker. So if they are able to, if they are awake, and if they can cough up sputum on their own, encourage them to do that, okay? You can stand a meter away from them and you can teach them the different breathing techniques I just shared with you. 
And deep breathing in a sitting up position in and of itself will help generate sputum clearance. It'll help generate a cough. It'll make it easier for the patient to cough. So even if they're not intubated, they still may need help bringing secretions from the deep part of the lungs to the more larger and superficial airways and then help coughing it up. So breathing techniques, huffing techniques, encouraging them to, encouraging them to cough, but most importantly, getting them out of supine into sitting and hopefully into standing and walking because that's the best way to open up our lungs. Uh, Habiba, what do you recommend uh, a spiro, uh, a spirometry's role? Because um, some doctors, as uh, a question is written, ask the uh, nurses and technicians to do it, while others say don't do it because it causes aerosol activity, aerosolization. So yes. what is your recommendation? So um, it's uh, instead of spirometry, it's actually really difficult for patients to do. Um, a patient who has just been extubated with COVID-19 will not be able to do incentive spirometry. It's just too hard for them. So my recommendation is please avoid it. You might be able to start it when they're in the step down unit and they're actually stronger. You can start by doing diaphragmatic breathing, um, purse lip breathing, alternate nostril breathing to strengthen their respiratory muscles. Once they're a little bit stronger, then you can go to incentive spirometry. And yes, um, net, you know, aerosolization is a risk. Any kind of breathing, deep breathing and coughing technique is essentially an aerosolization risk. So um, uh, as a physiotherapist or paramedical staff, you need to be in appropriate PPE when you're doing those therapies with the patient. Thank you so much. My it's pleasure. really a very